What's going on everyone? My name is Max and today we are going to be looking at a video with former CEO of OceanGate, Stockton Rush. Now, most of you know what happened a few days ago, but what I do on this channel is I look at all different types of people's communication skills and I give you my thoughts. My background is in sales and business development and about five years ago, I started a communication skills training business where I help all different types of professionals with their communication skills. And on this channel, generally what I do is I look at celebrities and I give people my thoughts on their interviews, presentations, conversations, and I try to break down what I think makes them engaging and likable. So this is a little bit different. We're gonna be looking at something that's obviously been relevant in the news lately. And I'm just gonna give you my honest thoughts on Stockton Rush here. Rest in peace to him and all the other uh, passengers who were on Titan. Obviously a very unfortunate event. So again, I'm just gonna be as objective as possible here. Let's get started in this quick clip from CBC. I'm Canadian, so we got a CBC clip over here. We are inside the submersible Titan which is a carbon fiber and titanium sub that can go to the depths of the Titanic. Hi, my name is Stockton Rush. I'm the CEO and founder of OceanGate. Let's take a look at Titan. So we're coming into the sub. This is the only toilet available on a deep diving submersible. Best seat in the house. You can look out the viewport. We put a privacy screen in, turn up the music, and uh, it's uh, very popular. We have our uh, control screen here, our sonar screen here. Right away from his communication style, like he sort of projects a certain excitement and positivity when he speaks. So I can see people sort of latching on to that. You know, oftentimes when we look at charismatic speakers, we can sense a certain energy, a certain excitement from them, right? When someone's more excited when they speak, it's oftentimes a lot more engaging to listen to. It's a lot more sort of convincing and people who have influence often talk with excitement because excitement is generally drawn from a certain amount of conviction that you have in what you're saying. So you can sort of hear that in his tone. He kind of sounds like this big dreamer, like this kid who's excited to kind of share his passion with the world. Best seat in the house, you can look out the viewport, we put a privacy screen in, turn up the music, and uh, it's uh, very popular. We have our uh, control screen here, our sonar screen here. I've worked with quite a few engineers, and from what I've experienced, engineers aren't necessarily as comfortable speaking in public. I think because there's so much information in their field, it's, it's a very technical field that they're in, and they're so immersed in it, it can be much more difficult to describe what they do to the general public or to an audience outside of that field. It's something I've talked about on this channel before called the curse of knowledge. When we're so consumed in something, we assume other people know what we know. So it can be hard to talk about things in a simple way, which is really important as a communicator, right? We want to be able to get our message across to as wide of an audience as possible. And sometimes in order to do that, we need to rid of the, get rid of the technical jargon and be able to communicate our message in a way that's, that's more digestible. And Stockton Rush here, he seems to you know, have a good handle on that. So I can see him being sort of this influential kind of persuasive person because of his excitement and because of his ability, it seems like so far, to communicate more simply. But let's continue here. We have our uh, control screen here, our sonar screen here, and we can put any image we want in the back. We've taken a completely new approach to the sub design and it's all run with this game controller. Yeah, it's almost like he's trying to, again, really f making an effort to, to focus on the positives and highlight the positives here. It's almost like he's selling this to the audience, it feels like a little. Best seat in the house, you can look out the viewport. We're very popular and we can put any image we want in the back. No knock on him there, right? He's Again, I understand what he's trying to do. He's trying to create some excitement around this, and it seems like 
he himself is, is quite excited about this. Now, here's the infamous game controller. Back, we've taken a completely new approach to the sub design, and it's all run with this game controller and these touch screens. So if you want to go forward, you press forward. If you want to go back, you go back, turn left, turn right, go down, go up. And it's Bluetooth, so I can hand it to anybody. And it's meant for a 16-year-old to throw it around and super durable. We keep a couple of spares on board just in case. He's like pleased with himself here. He's like, this is cool. I'm going to be going down to the bottom of the ocean and I've got this game controller. I don't know if he wants to be recognized for his difference in approach here, but you can tell he's pleased with himself. You can tell he's sort of smitten by the whole idea. That's what it seems like to me. And it's meant for a 16 year old to throw it around and super durable. We keep a couple of spares on board just in case. And again, like take note of the language that he's using. The language that he's using is language that anyone can understand. You know, he's breaking down this very technical design into the most simple language possible. You know, as an audience, we're watching this. Everyone can kind of understand him. Maybe some people are like, this guy's an idiot. I don't know what people would think before this happened, right? It's easy to kind of cast negative judgment now and say, this guy was an idiot. But if he came up alive with everyone else, then, you know, maybe people would be touting him as this hero. Perhaps that's what he wanted. I don't know. But again, he's communicating very simply in a way that the audience can follow along really easily. And he's excited about this, this little invention that he has here. Years ago, they t the uh, Russians took tourists out to the, uh, to the Titanic, uh, and it was just sort of a look and see thing. We really are focusing on the science around it. We want to document what the wreck is like now and also try to predict what it'll be like in the future. So y you can tell there's a bigger mission here behind what he's saying. And, and I believe that he genuinely believed in, in making this mission happen and, and making this vision a reality. I believe that. Like he seems like a dreamer. He seems like an optimist. He seems like sort of a kid speaking in a way. Like there's, there's this, you can almost sense an excitement from him. So I think it's probably a little bit more difficult for people around him to say no because of his just built-in excitement. It's like, I don't want to ruin this kid's dreams almost. That might sound silly. I know we're dealing with some serious stuff here and we're dealing with people's lives. I'm just saying, perhaps that was a factor. Perhaps his excitement and his charisma and his ability to kind of sell people around him on his dream was a factor in this entire thing, right? It's continuing to decay and it seems to be accelerating. It's being eaten by a bacteria, so it's literally being eaten by the ocean. It's not rusting away. So these things that, that are called rusticles are actually the, the byproduct of a bacteria that eats the iron. And as it does that, these, these uh, decks are collapsing. The promenade deck continues to collapse forward. Uh, we saw some of the railing is starting to, to, to lose its structural strength, which is really a sad thing. That's when it's going to stop looking like the Titanic. So he, again, like just in that little bit, I think he's demonstrating a little bit of his credibility here, demonstrating his, in that brief sentence, his understanding of mechan the mechanics of the Titanic, about engineering, and also demonstrating his knowledge of the sea. And I know those were quick tidbits, but as an audience, when we're listening, I think those little things get ingrained in our head where we're like, okay, this guy does sort of sound like he knows what he's talking about that are called rusticles are actually the, the byproduct of a bacteria that eats the iron. And he's speaking about it again in a way that almost anyone can understand. He's not sort of imp implementing any sort of real technical jargon. So I actually think that worked to his benefit in a sense as a communicator. But again, just those two little sound bites, I think, help demonstrate his credibility. And, and when we think about what makes someone a really good speaker, we think about things like excitement and passion, but we also think about things like credibility. You know, what makes me feel like this person's credible? Because if we don't think someone's competent or credible, it's gonna be hard to listen to them. And I think things like that probably helped his cause. So I think Stockton Rush is actually quite a good communicator, was a good communicator, and, and knows uh, what he's doing in that sense. The interest in the Titanic is the reason we go there, because people are willing to fund this kind of exploration and science, and that gives a completely different research component that almost nowhere else in the deep ocean can, can you get funding to go back 
every year for decades and see how coral reefs develop and see how, uh, how metals decay and see how currents change. I mean, that just, you, you can't justify that. No government will pay for that. Nobody wants to go back to just some old reef, but people do. So he's an outside the box thinker. He's a visionary. No one's going to do that. I want to do that. I'm going to make it happen. And you can feel the excitement in his voice. You can feel the passion. And again, when we listen to speakers who are passionate about their subjects, we're much more likely to listen in. And that's really the goal, right? We want to move our audiences to a point where they take in what we say and maybe are even influenced by what we say. But if you don't have them engaged or listening, you have no chance in doing that. And that's what passion does. That's what excitement does. Okay, this guy believes something here. I believe this guy. He's excited about something. Again, it's that excitement. It's that passion that fuels our engagement. You can't justify that. No government will pay for that. Nobody wants to go back to just some old reef. But people do want to go yeah. back to the Titanic. And that's why we go, is because people want to go. And that's why we go. It's because people want to go. So this guy was a visionary, and, and, and you can tell he was obviously a leader. Obviously, people followed him, and he clearly had a vision. And I think, you know... People are drawn to that when we hear someone with a clear vision and a clear mission who's enthusiastic about following that, in addition to you know, his charisma and his positivity and his excitement when he speaks in a way that you know, can captivate a large audience because he's not using that sort of technical engineering jargon. So I think a lot of people probably resonated with that too. Um, either way, it's tragic. Obviously, what happened is horrible. And despite what you think of Stockton Rush, um, you know, he was still a human being that I think had a family and was probably loved by many. So rest in peace to him and everyone else that was involved. But those are my thoughts on his communication skills. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know what you think. My name is Max. I will catch you soon. Peace.